JJ the CPA here, hope you're doing well. So what do you need to be doing right now, okay? So maybe you got your PPP, maybe you got the EIDL, maybe you got the PUA, maybe you've got other means that you're dipping into. You're probably feeling good now or you're feeling maybe a little more secure, a little less stressed, given that you've been getting some relief, been getting some support. So what I want you to do is feel good about that, still rest easy, but now I want you to open your eyes and I want you to really look, and it's gonna be really easy. I just want you to look five weeks from now. I talked in the past about looking at your cash flow in three weeks from now, because if you know where you're gonna stand cash flow wise in three weeks, you'll make different decisions right now. Well, we're in summer. We know that the numbers are going back up, but we've got the relief. We are back open and have been. We're learning to work around a number of the limitations that we have. We know that there's a number of businesses that are closing down. We know that there's a new stress level that's coming back into play in terms of our health. But what I want you to really think through five weeks from now, and this isn't a doom and gloom, unless you don't really start thinking ahead, then it can become a doom and gloom. So many times those that fail, bankrupt, end up where they didn't think they would be, it just came down to being too busy to look ahead or maybe a little too worried, a little too scared to think about all the what ifs. But I want you to take a different direction I want you to think about where are you gonna be in five weeks? What do you want it to look like, okay? Let's look at it that way. And let's not talk about the things that you can't control. Can't control what the government's gonna do in terms of open, close, what are the restrictions. Can't probably do anything about what the banks are gonna do as it relates to giving you loans. You don't know what your customers are going to do. You don't know what your landlord's going to do, right? There's a lot of third parties out here that you're involved with every day, whether it's personally or with your business, that you don't have any control over. So what is it that you have control over and how do you protect that from the standpoint financially five weeks from now? Because let's think, where are we going to be five weeks from now? Well, no matter when you're watching this, you're going to be most likely into the next month, which means five weeks from now, no matter where you are in the process of your month, you're going to have another month of rent, another month of mortgage payments. You're going to have at least one more, if not two more payrolls, whether it's payrolls you're receiving or payrolls that you are paying. All the major expenses that you will have on a monthly basis, you will have experienced that for sure within five weeks. So when you're looking ahead, it's really simple. What you wanna do is first and foremost on your own personal bank account, how much money do you have in there? What normally comes in in a month period of time and what normally goes out? And are you in the same position five weeks from now? It's really easy, get on your app, and just look at the last 30 days of activity. You're gonna see what your net paycheck is. You're gonna see the expenses that are going out, auto debits and whatnot. Just be, you're just looking at it, just be familiar with it. Is there anything that came out that was special that you know you won't have again, meaning a car repair that came out? You know you're not gonna have that again. But know what your cash position is now, but then know where it is five weeks. And you're gonna do the same thing with your business. Now I know that you could be thinking, well, I don't know how much I'm going to bring in. I don't know how much I'm going to spend. Well, you do know what you're going to bring in based on what are you owed right now? What do your customers owe you? Maybe in some businesses, nothing because it's daily sales. Well, good. And that's good information to know. So how much money do you have in the bank? Not doom and gloom, but how much, how long does that money last you? The money that you have in the account right now, personal or business, if no money were to come in, how long does it last you? That's all. There, why be scared of it? It's just a reality. It's just numbers. That's all it is. It's just numbers. Why not be aware 
of where you're going to be in five weeks as in I have 20,000 in my business account. If I don't bring any more dollars in based on my payroll and my rent and the other expenses just in general, hmm, five weeks from now, I'm gonna have about five grand. Okay, that also tells you that five weeks from now, if no money comes in, that the next five weeks, you need to figure out, well, how am I taking care of that five weeks? Which comes to this, availability of credit, availability of, um, spending power. So I'm not saying that you should run out and borrow money, but you probably do want to also assess what do you have available to you, whether it's credit cards or loans, uh, line of credit. And from my perspective, you want to be aware of that. But part of the reason I want you to be aware of that is that you may not be able to count on that in five weeks, 10 weeks. We get kind of maybe complacent or a little too assured by the fact that, oh, I have a credit card, it has you know, a $10,000 limit, I don't owe anything on it, boy, that's my emergency. Yeah, absolutely, that's, that's most Americans. You have a line of credit, right? You're like, oh, you know, well, I have a, a $50,000 line of credit, I don't owe anything on it, so I know I can get back to it. So, the thing to note here, though, is that the banks are going to start also sinking in with the mindset that businesses are going to be closing. Unfortunately, I mean, it depends on where you read what statistics, but 14% of businesses, small businesses, are expected to fail by the end of the summer. Well, end of the summer, I mean, we're talking like 60 days from now, maybe 90. So banks are now hyper aware of the fact that businesses may be failing, which means what? They're not getting paid. Now, guess what? You might be one of those that you think and know, right? Well, I've got a business. I know I'm not going to fail because you're providing a service or whatever it is that you're doing. You know you're not going to fail. You might have a dip. You might be closed for a little while. There might be customers that aren't able to pay you, but you feel good and confident. But are you feeling also good and confident because you have a healthy line of credit that you can go to because think of this, as the banks are having to start eating loans that they didn't get repaid, they're now gonna have to just be a little more cautious. They're gonna have to look at their lending abilities and you may be the best customer they've ever had and you might pay on time and there might not be any issues, but they might take your line of credit and say, here's what you have available and we're gonna to have to reduce that. So prime example is American Express. You know, kind of smart for American Express, but anytime we hit the times that we're in, and uh, it's really, you know, in my professional career over 27 years, probably been at least three times we've hit some woes here, and a great indicator that we're heading to a woe is how is American Express interacting with its customers. So. You may not be alone, but American Express, in essence, that typically is kind of an unlimited amount of credit or not a set limit, uh, will start reducing down the availability of credit. So, I mean, I did a video on it a couple of months ago, but I got a call from them and they said, hey, what you owe us right now, uh, that's your credit limit for the next 90 days. Uh, so you can pay it down, but Whatever you owe right now, that's just now your temporary credit limit. Well, if I had been counting on my American Express for whatever purposes, I'm not gonna be able to use it beyond what I owe. So if I owe X amount of dollars and I pay it down by two grand, well, I only have 2,000 credit available. Here's my point overall. Think ahead five weeks from now. What do you want things to look like five weeks from now? So what is it that you can do about it? What is it that you can control, right? You can't control all these third parties, as I said at the beginning. You can't really control all of the banks and what their decisions are going to be. But what you can control is what you know right now. So the more that you know, the more prepared you're going to be. So if you have available uh, uh, funds on your line of credit and you know five weeks from now, you're gonna be out of money. Maybe instead of waiting five weeks to take an advance on your line of credit, maybe you take an advance on your line of credit now. 
So from my perspective, I think that because the numbers are going back up, okay, the concerns financially are going to go back up as well. And it's going to be different this time because the PPP that has been extended has not been added to, there's over a hundred billion. They may repurpose that later, but five weeks, why do you think they came up with five weeks? Now, I'm not talking conspiracy theory. I'm just, you know, economists are involved in these decisions. Why do you think they are allowing five more weeks? You know, it doesn't have anything to do with the election. doesn't have anything to do with, um, you know, politics, in my opinion. It has to do with the economics of getting us through the next five weeks. Why? Why? Look at what the numbers are doing, which just means business is closing, right? Less business. People are staying home. What are all the effects? So in closing, I'll say this. Look at the last five weeks. And now look at the next five weeks. Because the last five weeks, we had numbers and we were coming down. And now we, as we move forward, we're coming up. Well, guess what? We have some historical data there to look at. And I don't mean historical data of numbers and how many cases of uh, coronavirus um, infections there are. I'm talking about with your business, with your cash flow. And then the PPP, the PUA, the EIDL, how much has that helped you, okay, going back five weeks or eight weeks? So now when you look forward, don't include the fact that you've had PPP, EIDL. Five weeks from now, where do you want to be? Five weeks from now, where are you going to be? You know, a 15-minute exercise, whatever that looks like, write it down, think about it, type it out, whatever it is. And when you find yourself going into a worrisome, then you just need to stop, take a deep breath, blink your eyes a whole bunch, reset the channel in your brain, okay? Because this, this isn't an exercise of doom and gloom. It's an exercise of going in eyes wide open to the next five weeks. Get ahead of it so that you're prepared. And then you won't end up somewhere that you had no idea how you got there. Right? So turn on your Siri, your own Siri, and figure out what's your destination. There's a lot of ways to get wherever it is that you need to go, but how do you want to get there? And then do it. All right. Hey, Thanks for tuning in. I'd love it if you'd subscribe on my website, jjthecpahelp.com. Um, I've got a survival guide page. Um, there's no email to put in. I don't need to know who you are. You're not going to tell me who you are. There's no gimmicks. But I have in there a survival guide and how to project your cash flow very simply and very easily uh, to help you. So thanks for tuning in. And don't you ever forget, you've never met a CPA quite like me. All right, hey, go get them.